Kerry here from Homestead How. Welcome to our homestead. In today's video, we're gonna show you how to become free. That's a pretty big statement, but that's what we're gonna try to do in today's video. We're gonna show you a plan to regain your freedom, just like Jen and I did when we purchased this very homestead six years ago. We've been living a life of amazing freedom for the last six years. Freedom to do what we want, when we want. Freedom to work on the projects that we're interested in. Freedom to pursue new hobbies. And most importantly, freedom to spend more time with our family. And in today's video, we're gonna show you a very specific plan, exactly what we did to become free with specific examples and tactics that you can do and a plan that you can put into place so that you can do the same thing we did. Our road to freedom was not easy. Of course, nothing that's worthwhile is easy. Jen and I have been together since the age of 14. One thing that I learned early on is that every single decision I make affects my freedom. I always tell my girls that life is a result of the decisions you make. I've worked very hard to make decisions and at the heart of every decision I think about how it will impact my future. When Jen and I found out we're having triplets, that's when we got really serious about all of our decisions. Well, are you sitting down? Uh oh. Now I am. We're having triplets. Get out of here. I'm serious. And they look like all girls. You're serious? I'm serious. So about 10 years before the cash purchase of our homestead, Jen and I created a very specific plan and strategy, and we're going to show you what worked for us. And before you think, oh, we're special, we inherited some money, or we're just lucky, we didn't inherit any money, we started with nothing, neither of us went to college, and if you watch this YouTube channel, you'll know I'm a complete idiot and moron most of the time. If this idiot here was able to do this, anybody can do it. He's editing in, guys. My husband is an idiot. He's outside, running around in the cold, 10 degree weather, <laughs> with no shirt on, no shoes on. He said he's cold weather training. Whatever that means, I don't know. But he's an idiot. Look at him go. <laughs> One of the biggest changes we made in the 10 years leading up to the purchase of our homestead was regarding our vehicles. We have never purchased a new vehicle or taken a loan out on a car. A car loan scares the heck out of me. So much freedom traded for that new car smell that quickly fades away. We've always bought used cars, usually no more than $1,500. We've run the math and leading up to the purchase of our homestead, this decision alone has banked us $74,000. 324 additional dollars in the 10 years leading up to the purchase of our homestead. This money was in saved monthly car payments over what the average American would pay for a car loan payment and in saved costs for expensive insurance you would need on a new car. My current vehicle, you can see here on the screen, is a 2005 minivan. I've had it for three years now. It's got almost 250,000 miles on it, a ton of rust on the side. I paid $1,200 for it several years back. If I prorate that into a monthly payment, we're looking at less than $30 per month. And guess what? It gets me from point A to point B. It runs great, and I never have a stressful car loan hanging over my head. And I've always had several hundred dollars extra per month to put towards paying off my mortgage early. I dedicated an entire video to our philosophy around purchasing used cars and how it saved us so much money leading up to the purchase of our homestead. I'll leave a link for that video in the description below. Here's a quick excerpt showing this Nissan we purchased and the fact that we could afford 11 of these used cars for the cost of one new car. So in the 10 years leading up to the purchase of our homestead, we literally banked 74,000 additional dollars that we were able to put towards paying for our house in cash. Our vehicles are just one example. Here are several more intentional decisions we've made to increase our freedom. Next up, let's quickly review cell phones and how much money we were able to save with these. While most of our peers always have the latest and greatest new iPhone or Android device, we have always had a cheap used phone, usually purchased on eBay, and the big kicker is we always use a no contract service. 
cost us about $20 per month. I have 99% of the bells and whistles on my Samsung phone that most new phones have, but I only pay about one-fifth the cost that most people pay per month. That rounds out to $80 more per month that I can save, which equals almost $1,000 a year in savings. So in the 10 years leading up to the purchase of our homestead, that's another $10,000. And that's just for one phone. Another intentional decision we made in the 10 years leading up to the purchase of our homestead is around clothing. We never buy high-end clothes or expensive clothes or new clothes for ourselves or our children. We're very frugal that way. We buy almost all of our clothes used from Goodwill, thrift stores, or rummage sales. As parents of Triplets Plus One, hand-me-downs just don't work so well. We buy the clothes used, we use the clothes, and then we resell them at a consignment store, recouping a lot of our money. After reselling them, our clothing cost is easily a fraction of that of the average American, and that really adds up over the years. The average family spends $1,800 per year on clothing. We spend $500 after reselling the clothes after use, meaning we save about $1,500 per year or another $15,000 saved up in the 10 years leading up to the cash purchase of our homestead. That's right, another $15,000 cash we have to put towards paying off our mortgage. Now let's talk about real estate. While most of our peers bought the nicest homes with granite countertops in the trendiest neighborhoods, we've always done just the opposite. We've always purchased fixer-uppers. Our first home, for example, was a small Cape Cod. We paid $86,000 for it, fixed it up, and sold it five years later for $125,000. We rolled the profits or cash over from that sale into our next house. By the time we got to house number three, our current homestead that we're living in now, we had a significant stockpile of cash rolled over from house to house to house to help pay cash for our homestead. In this case, we had $45,000 total cash from both homes to roll into our homestead. So that was another $45,000 we had to put into our homestead. And I attribute most of that money to the fact that we purchased homes that were fixer-uppers and we put in the hard work to fix them up and we made a profit at the end. In other words, we invested in ourselves. All right, so those were some of the major ways we've been able to save up an incredible amount of money and pay off our homestead and regain a bunch of our freedom. But there's been a lot of little things along the way that we've done as well in the 10 years leading up to the purchase of our homestead and also that we do every day over the last six years that we've lived here. I'm gonna go through this list really quickly, but I think there's some ideas on here, some decisions that you can make intentionally that might be able to help you. Number one, haircuts. What does a haircut cost now? I don't even know, is it like 20 bucks? 15 bucks plus a tip plus the gas. You go there, you gotta drive your, in your car and put gas in the car and then you gotta sit there and wait in the waiting room. So if that's $20, you get a haircut once a month, that's $360 per year. Over the course of the 10 years leading up to the purchase of our homestead, I've saved $3,600 just by having Jen cut my hair. She doesn't always do a good job. That's why you always see me wearing a hat. But I got a lot of money, extra money in the bank and freedom, and I would rather have that freedom and that money and the ability on a Tuesday to go to a movie or go golfing or do whatever I enjoy doing versus uh, losing out all that money on, on some of those luxuries. Another thing we do, number two, growing food at, at home instead of grocery shopping. We did this at our old house. Now, of course, we're homesteaders, so we have even more space to do that here. I know that's not an option for everybody, but I don't know, most people have room for a small garden. And with inflation going through the roof, can be a great way to save even more money going forward into 2022. Another idea, fixing things ourselves. I never pay someone to fix something for us. Almost never, unless I just absolutely can't do it. That goes for things around the house, um, to car issues. There's almost nothing that can break on the car that you can't go type into YouTube and they will show you exactly for your car, make and model and the broken item what to do to fix it. So brake work, changing the oils, struts, shocks, hubs, all that stuff, I've been able to learn from watching a YouTube video that it's not even learning it, they just like, hey, is this your car, a 2005 Uplander? Here's exactly how you do it for your car. Anybody can do that, and we've saved a ton of money doing that. So in terms of how much money we saved in the 10 years leading up to the purchase of our homestead, it has to be at least $5,000 probably way more than that because it can get really expensive. I'm talking about home remodeling, drywall work, everything we've done ourselves. So 
I'll just say $5,000, but it was probably more than that. And we probably saved a ton of money in this homestead because an incredible amount of work was needed to get this property to where it is now. And I'm still fixing stuff all of the time. Another way we saved money, having a hobby and turning it into a profitable business. Jen is a great example of this. She loves crafting. She's got a cricket machine. She started just doing it for fun. And then she's like, why don't I put that out on YouTube and I can turn it into a little business. She's been doing that for a while now and she makes about $500 a month in YouTube revenue. And then she makes another $500 a month or even more selling the crafts to local consignment stores. So her little hobby that was just a little bit of fun has turned into a business where she's making well over $1,000 per month every single month for doing crafts that she would have done for free otherwise. It's not easy. It's a lot of extra work filming it, editing it, and selling this stuff. But um, turn your hobby into a business. So that's another idea. Uh, number five here. Over the 10 years leading up to our homestead purchase, we cut our cable early. We did that before many people did. Maybe you've done that already. I know a lot more people are doing that now. But I don't know how many times we have a cable bill. And then the next month, it's like, Jesus, there's another fee on here and another fee and another fee. You're at like $100 a month. And then you're over $100 a month for cable. We cut that a long time ago at our old place. We had an antenna and we had Netflix and YouTube. There's so much good content on YouTube right now. Even now, I almost only watch YouTube. And even in the 10 years leading up to our purchase of our homestead, watched a ton of YouTube. But Netflix is what, $15 a month? So if you just did Netflix, YouTube, and cable right now, and you were paying $100 a month, you'd be saving $85 per month. Now you might be thinking, oh, I work hard, $85 a month, that's not too much. $85 per month, that's $1,000 per year. Over the course of 10 years leading up to the purchase of our homestead, that's another $12,000 we were able to save. So it really adds up over time. One other big thing, I mentioned um, the garden and not everybody can do that. This thing everybody can do and it can save you an incredible amount of money. Groceries. We get all of our groceries from Aldi's. There's all these locations all over the country right now. And we've got friends and family and some of them will kind of scoff at all these and they, I just, I think they don't understand it. They think it's like dented cans and it's old expired gross food. It is the opposite of that. I've mentioned this on the channel before. I love all these. It's a very innovative business. It's so smart. Here's the example I can give you. Let's say you go to a major grocery store right now and you want to buy some ketchup. You go to the ketchup aisle and there's 4,000 types of ketchup. Big ketchup, little ketchup, gourmet ketchup, sugar-free ketchup, different brands of ketchup, glass bottle, plastic bottle. You're paying an incredible premium to have that option to be able to pick from all those different types of ketchup. So the ketchup that you choose, it's gonna be way more expensive. Now you go to Aldi's, you know how much ketchup they have? They have one bottle of ketchup. Because they only have one, they have less shelf space, less stocking, and the, they're able to get a better price on it for you. So the price is incredibly cheaper. I don't care what kind of ketchup I have, they'll just go to Aldi's and buy it from there. So those are just a few of the ways we've been able to save money. You have to be intentional. I wish schools taught more about the importance of money and saving, but the truth is most people are in debt and don't intentionally manage their money well at all. So get intentional. One very simple and free way to start this is to check out Dave Ramsey's Baby Steps. I have absolutely no affiliation with them whatsoever. I found them later in life and it takes all of the guesswork out of money management and saving money. So that's another $6,000 we were able to save up in the 10 years leading to the purchase of our homestead by shopping frugally at Aldi's instead of going to the big grocery stores. Now if we tally all of these items up in the 10 years leading to the purchase of our homestead, we were able to bank $185,924. Absolutely amazing amount of money. Now we purchased this homestead six years ago for $115,000. Probably a smaller number than you would think, but this place was a dilapidated fixer upper. About 100 people came and looked at it. Nobody wanted to deal with it, so we had to put in a ton of work. So it was nice to have that cushion between the 185 and the 115. We also put a lot of that additional money into fixing up the property, including building our Airbnb rental out. All right, so in conclusion, that's how Jen and I set ourselves up to pay off our mortgage on our homestead here at the age of 36, six years ago. Now, if you wanna retire early, maybe asking, it's just paying off your mortgage, how do you retire early? My biggest advice is, in the process of paying off your mortgage and learning how to save everything, you start investing in yourself. 
So many people our age invest in 401ks and retirement plans. I think those things are really smart, but I also think it's a lot smarter to first invest in yourself. And over the years, Jen and I have done that numerous, numerous times. So if we have a little bit of extra money that we're thinking about putting into the stock market or a 401k, we first think, how can we invest that into ourselves? That could be as simple as adding on a bathroom or a bedroom or a remodel to your house that's gonna give you a big return on your money when you go to sell it. Then we branched out into starting small businesses. Like I mentioned earlier, Jen does I Create Crafts, her YouTube channel. We built our dog kennel, our off-grid building here that we turned into a four-stall dog kennel. We have our Airbnb rental. Those are somewhat passive businesses that we were able to start pretty easily. Airbnb rental we fixed up, we have a cleaner that comes in and it just runs by itself. The money comes in through Airbnb, um, sometimes we meet the guests but most of the time we don't even interact with them. So it's a somewhat of a passive income that uh, helps pay for all of our other bills while we're semi-retired early. And I think the biggest issue that most people have, I guess this is a motivational speech, not trying to rant, but so many Americans, in my opinion, are spoiled or scared. I don't know how many stories I heard of immigrants coming over to the United States with nothing in their pockets and starting a huge business. My first job was at an Italian restaurant. The owner of the company did just that, came over from Italy, had hardly any money in his pocket, Turn this Italian restaurant in Milwaukee into a huge business that passed down to his children and it supported generations and generations after him. We live in America and in this day and age you can learn anything. I can go on YouTube right now, how do I start a dog kennel? How do I start an Airbnb business? What are some good side hustle ideas? You have all the information right at our fingertips. I think the biggest problem most people have is they just don't do it. They're scared, they get comfortable in their job that they probably hate and don't like going to and then they just keep doing it instead of branching out and trying something. What do you got to lose? Keep your job, try a little side hustle, get some income going on the side because besides saving all the money as we showed you how to do in this video, you also have to learn how to start growing some income passively. That could just be in the stock market. Stock market's doing really well, but um, my advice is to try to invest in yourself. You're not gonna have a bigger return on your investment than if you invest in yourself. I could go on forever. Please leave a comment down below. What are some things and decisions you've made to save yourself money, to be frugal? Those are some ways we've saved money and we've been able to regain our freedom. It's uh, been an amazing life these last six years. It's been awesome. And um, I hope that some other people out there can experience the same thing that we have. So feel free to reach out if you guys have questions, if you're struggling and you wanna enact some of these things or have some ideas, I'd be more than happy to assist. At the end of the video, we're gonna show you some of our favorite photographs from Anna and about our homestead. Thanks a lot for watching.